called jointly controlled assets, jointly controlled operations, that will still fit under joint operations, but that has its own standard called IFRS 11. But the joint venture that we had before now is going to be accounted for under IS 28. Then there's a new standard called IFRS 12, which deals with disclosures. It deals with disclosures of entities that you control, with associates, with joint ventures, and joint operations. And it also deals with something else called unconsolidated structured entities. These are the SPVs you created, and you managed to fool your auditors, and they didn't consolidate them. They were unconsolidated structured entities. Then you need to tell us about them. That's the reality. Or they are entities which you have provided funding to. You decided to do a scholarship trust and you are subject to variability in returns there. Those are unconsolidated structured entities. Tell us about it. That's what IFRS 12 is saying. All right. So that's the suite of standards. This is the problem. I mean, if you look at exemptions from preparing financial statements, 2008 standards in IFRS 10, they have the similar requirements. The big thing here, the big fix-up that, that, that IFRS 10 is trying to do, it's saying we don't want two different control models. We just want a single control model. The nature of the entity mustn't affect. I mean, if you're going to structure something in a specific way to try and avoid consolidation, that's wrong. I mean, and I'll tell you who's going to be hit most by IFRS 10. You know, it's these funds. You've got this company, that, this private equity company. It holds, let's say, 22% of the shares in this vehicle. And is also the asset manager. In the good old days, what we'd say, oh, 22% voting rights? No, no, no. It's too little. <laughs> is it an, is it, are you taking the majority of benefits, which is what SPE required? We'd say no. IFRS 10 says, wait a minute, who controls this thing? You know what, let me tell you how to think of control. Control is who has the steering wheel <laughs> when it matters. We are, they are saying, hey, wait a minute, you got 22%, what about the other, what the other 78%? No, no, they're all minor investors. Who controls this, this vehicle? You probably will have to consolidate And that's the answer IFRS 10 gets to. But we'll get there. How do you do consolidation doesn't change. All right, no change there. The definition of control is changed. Right. Control in IFRS 10 is power. That stays. Power means ability. Not whether you exercise the ability. Do you have the ability? With that ability, you need exposure to variability in returns. And is there a link between power and returns? Now, like most of us, we hate change. <laughs> We were so used to good old IS-27, which was power to govern the financial and operating active policies, so to get benefits. That was good old IS-27. It was nice. It was a rebuttable presumption that if we had more than 50%, we control. IFRS 10 creates this new thing. The way IFRS 10 works, it's like a flowchart in your mind. You got to now apply your mind rationally to get to a consolidation answer. It asks you questions. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and get to who consolidates. Why does, it, why does the standard go that way? It's a very different way of writing standards. I think they're trying to get rid of manipulation. Lawyers were creating structures or things into SPEs and not SPEs purely to get consolidation or not get consolidation. Why are airlines not on the balance sheet of aircrafts? Because you, you can see them there. It's because they run through special purpose vehicles that sit in Cayman Islands. You know the way I used to look at things, I mean, when I used to sit on the technical desk in South Africa, if anything is sitting in, if any South African company has some SPE sitting in Isle of Man or Cayman Islands consolidated, <laughs> why? Why would you put, why would you create an entity there? You're trying to ring fence something out of your books. Who controls it? The person who creates it. But the rules or the principles in IS-27 and SIG-12 are weak. And people used to structure around accounting. In reality, you can't structure around accounting. This is unfortunately what people try to do. Oh, we're not meeting this requirement in the words and looking at things literally. You can't structure around accounting. 
But because people have tried to structure around accounting, the standard setter says we need to fix the standard up. Now let's explain this concept a little bit more. In order to have power, you, it is necessary for the investor to have existing rights that give it the current ability to direct the activities that significantly affect the investor's returns. That's the relevant activities. In simple English, do you call the shots when it matters? If you call, call the shots when it matters, you control the thing. Lots of special purpose vehicles are on an autopilot. What we're saying autopilot, it's run by a contract. The contract says if you get cash, you pay here. Nobody has to make decisions. But if something happens, who calls the shots? If you have securitized, if you have a securitization vehicle, you know what, the contract runs that securitization vehicle. The question, or that IFRS 10 says is, what if there is a catastrophic default? Who steps in? That's the person who controls. All right. And then there's another thing that IFRS 10 changes. Control is assessed on a continuous basis. <laughs> in some points in time, you may not control. Sometimes control may change. And this can happen. Here's an example why IFRS 10 is different. I probably gave you this example before. You've got debt investors and equity investors investing in this investment vehicle. This investment vehicle goes and invests in assets. M holds 30% of the shares and is also the asset manager. Under IS 27 and 612, we'll say 30% too little. You don't have the majority of IS-27, do you have more than 50% of the voting rights? No. SIG-12, do you have a majority of the benefits? No. You would say, no, no, you don't consolidate. But if you're applying IFRS-10, you're asking, do you have the power over the relevant activities? Do you have exposure to variability in returns? Is there a link between your power and returns? In most cases, you would be consolidating. Very, very different approach. What this is going to mean, net, net, there's going to be more entities consolidated by funds. The way the flow chart you've got to do to get into IFRS 10, step one, identify the silo. <laughs> now that's a new word, eh? What they're saying is, look, okay, don't always look at the legal entity. Normally, in 99% of the time, you're going to look at the legal entity, the shares or the company. But sometimes, Within a special purpose vehicle, you may be creating silos. Now, what's a silo? Something that is totally ring-fenced. So the assets of these, this silo can't touch the assets or can't subsidize the assets of another silo. Sometimes we may have to look down to a silo. In some of your securitization vehicles, because the thing is so what, insulated, you look to the silo. But in most cases, we look to the vehicle. Second step, identify what are the relevant activities. What is important? What matters? How are decisions about what matters are made? Not who decides what color paint the walls must be. Look at what's the important activity. Who controls that important activity? Let me give you a quick example here. You've got a, a pharmaceutical manufacturer. You've got a, pharma a company wants to create a drug. There's two companies get involved. The one company does research on the drug. The second company, once the drug has reached a, a sufficient stage, will apply for the patent and will distribute and sell it. They put this whole thing into a new entity. So they do this whole process into an entity. So you've got company A doing the research, company B registering the patent and selling the product. Who, has, who controls this thing? Now, you may think, wait a minute, at different points in time, different companies control it. Or, we can say, what are the relevant activities? What's the big activity that's going to make money for me? It's the distribution and the selling. Who controls the distribution and selling the second company? Therefore, you consolidate the company. You understand it? Unless I'm saying the research component and that are separate silos, that they don't interlink, then I look at it differently. The third, pro the third point here is, for me, it's the weakness of IFRS 10. You know, the objective of IFRS 10, they didn't want you to go into two models. 
the problem with IFRS 10, it still goes into that same problem of IS-2010 